This episode's FDR shoutout goes to Mudzilla. Leave a comment down below to have a chance for a shoutout in the next episode. Make sure you're subscribed. All right, first of all, Shannon, this is an amazing tank. This is your second month in this hobby, and you have really outdone yourself. I like the atmospheric lighting with the floaters up top, and then you got carpeting plants, you got two types of substrate going on, really clean look with the real wood, and then some moss attached to that as well. That's pretty advanced there. Marima moss ball and a nice big sword in the back. Not to mention you got this cute little betta. Your awesome boyfriend, Jason, sent me this tank. He was impressed by your aquascaping skills as a novice fish keeper. I'm giving this a 4 out of 5, but as you constantly improve, I'm sure you'll be at a 5 out of 5 in no time. Now we got this little bunch of coolie loaches just trying to tuck themselves away as much as possible. Sardines minus their can. Ah yes, the sardine can. A coolie's perfect habitat. Kind of looks like they are screaming. Probably all yelling at the dummy who went in upside down. Ooh, like a penny. <laughs> Me. Can we go to the aquarium to see garden eels? Parents. No, we have garden eels at home. Garden eels at home. <laughs> Noodle plant. Just throw some root tabs in there and watch them grow. Stuffed water nudes. Still better than Mr. Noodles. Yes, that's true. They're hiding. If you add a few hiding places, they will feel safer and less stressed. Yes, but unfortunately this is the store I work at. There are a couple caves in there, but once we start adding a bunch more hides and cover it, becomes significantly more difficult to catch fish, so hopefully they sell quick and go to a good home. Well, that's kind of sad. Hope they make it. Now I'm gonna have my plug while the slideshow is going on. Shout out to my awesome patrons, Cranium Rex, Daniel Thomas, and also Corvus Austin. If you haven't heard of Corvus yet, go check out his YouTube channel. Basically every question that you have about fish, this guy has already figured it out. He's a wealth of knowledge and amazing free resource for everyone. For anyone else trying to show some additional support for this channel, Patreon is one of the best ways that you can do that. A couple dollars from you every month is going to impact me a lot. Plus you get early access to videos and shout out. Now for those who are wondering where is my tank, I emailed you a few days ago or weeks ago and I still haven't seen it. Well, worry not because I'm going through all of them. You guys be sending me emails that say like, I love your content Chris, please include my tank in your videos. How can I say no to any of that? Even if you don't put anything else in the email except for the picture of your tank, I will still include that for sure but it will take some time because I'm like 190 emails behind right now. It's gonna take additional patience on your end. Thank you for being patient already. I'm just going in order of who sent it first. It's only fair, right? Anyways, without further ado, let's get right into the video. All right, this gorgeous tank is sent to me by uh, Krista Yan, I think, Apostoloski. I hope I pronounced that right. I think the J there makes the E sound. Anyway, I really enjoyed this rimless tank. It's pretty clean. And the star of the show here is undoubtedly that really nice looking beta. Four out of five, let's go. All right, Darren Stockman sent this one in. This is a 29 gallon planted, but with fake plants. That's a bit unfortunate, but I really like how you kept it like as natural as you can. You might be able to fool a few people saying that these are life plants and they might not know the difference. So as far as artificial goes, this is quite natural on the artificial side, but it doesn't have any of the benefits that real plants actually do have, especially for fish that are dirty like goldfish, but you did your research two goldfish in a 29 gallon definitely doable i know i said that i'm not going over a three out of five for artificial tanks but i mean come on he got the ratio for goldfish right that's very impressive the 3.5 out of five this tank sent to me by colleen philo this is a 40 gallon guppy breeder it looks pretty nice got the chola wood over there crypts going crazy in the front anubias everywhere and then we got this awesome looking centerpiece tiger lotus that is the most impressive thing in this tank right now it was was trimmed back to keep short and then let grown tall so you got like both variations of the leaves. I need one of these in my tank soon. It's one of my favorite plants and I miss it a lot. Just try to keep the lights in check as I see some algae growth on the Anubius. I'm struggling with that myself so I know what a challenge it can be. 4 out of 5. This one's from Vulcan Plays. Now I wasn't going to review this tank but then it really caught my eye because of the totally black beta. It might just be the lighting that is totally black but it's close to it and although the tank is 
is not dirty. It definitely is lacking a bit more light because the Java moss, you can see that it's a little bit like graying out, kind of dying back a little bit. It's not too happy, but the whole mood of the tank kind of fits in with the theme with the beta. And then we got these fish that accent the whole scape, the ember tetra. I would suggest more lights to, you know, flare up the colors of the java moss and maybe fill the water level higher. You're just losing out on real estate for the fish, really. Like if this was a 10 gallon, now it's like eight, seven gallons. So 3.5 out of five. This overgrown tank is from Omer Iqbal. I love overgrown tanks. I like it when there's a change up in the aquascape. You can tell that he has been trimming them still, which is still great. You're doing maintenance on your tank. That's awesome. The Valis Naria is poking everywhere. The textures are crazy. This water wisteria here is a little bit suffering though. It's like, oh gosh, I can't compete with any of these other plants. This massive sword is like sucking all the nutrients away. Wisteria rescue, please. 4.25 out of five, let's go. All right, sometimes I get really, really nice typical tanks and then I get really awesome innovative tanks, and this would be a very innovative tank. I've been very attracted to paludariums or like aquariums that aren't fully aquatic aquariums, and this one hits the spot. It's even got a mini fog machine, so you know it's like serious business. It's accented by the branches. Oh, it's perfect. It's got some floating plants over there. It's got some terrestrial plants growing on the side in the filter, helping the filtration. The scape underwater is no joke either. Honestly, this is a tank I aspire to make in the future. It's getting my five out of five. Oh, and I almost forgot to give credit to Terry Thompson who sent this tank. Very good job, Terry. Oh my goodness. Uh, let me check with my producer if I can just skip this one. Uh, can I can I skip this one? You're allowed to skip if you want. <sighs> Can I skip this one? As, I guess I can't skip two in a row. But actually looking at this tank and just thinking for a minute, like the substrate looks clean and it's suspiciously similar to a blackwater biotope. So I'm not sure if that's what's happening here. Blackwater biotopes release healthy tannins and are actually really good for tetras, especially. Oh, but there's actually goldfish in there. So I'm guessing it's not okay. Those aren't tannins. It's probably because you haven't done a water change for like ever. No good, bro. Zero out of five. Way too small for a Berta. Berta fish tank, $7. Next. Man, why you gotta do me like this? Goldfish again? If they get any bigger, they're not gonna be able to even fit through the little hole on the top. Like, you'll never get them out. Well, I'm already being optimistic. Those goldfish probably will die before that. I don't see a filter in there. But okay, let me be clear, all right? If it's not a goldfish, if it's not a betta, and then you can even plant this tank more thoroughly with, you know, some floater, some elodia to extract the nitrates and ammonia from the water, then this lamp tank would be actually quite nice. You put some shrimp in there, maybe even some nano fish. You could create a closed system successfully. If you understock it by a huge margin, it could actually work out. But nope, owner decided to put goldfish in there. We've reached the end of the episode. I really hope that this episode made your day a little bit better and helped raise some awareness for the bad tanks that are out there. Really, there's a bunch of amazing tanks out there. I never expected there to be so many, uh, you know, varieties of tanks that you guys are sending me and I really appreciate every single one of the emails. I read every single one of them even if I don't hit the reply sometimes. So if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next one and don't forget to get your hands wet.